Hello there again everybody, Trekworks here with you. Well it's a nice Sunday afternoon so I'm out in the shop working on the NX-01 here today and you can see uh, what I've got laid out here is I've got the upper and lower saucer halves and uh, so far what I've done is I've sprayed these down with some flat black primer on the inside to do the uh, light blocking on these. We don't want our bright LEDs to shine through the plastic so uh, we've got to pretty, uh, put a pretty good coat of that down first. And then what I'll be doing next is heading over to the spray uh, booth area there and spraying down a nice coat of white uh, all over these to get those uh, nice and bright on the inside so our light's going to bounce around really good and light up our windows all nice and even. And then when I finish up with that, I'll come back over to the bench here and we'll start wiring in a bunch of our LED strip tape and some of our other little uh, LEDs here and there to do the lighting on this. So let me get this sprayed down. I'll bring it back over to the bench and we'll start progressing with the uh, wiring and lighting. I'll be right back with that. Okay everybody, well you can see I've made it back from the spray booth now and here's our saucer all painted up in some nice bright white. That should really help that light bounce around inside there really well and get all those windows lit up nice and evenly. And uh, I'm starting to work with my LED tape now. Let me give you a shot of this tape. I'm using some new tape that I picked up uh, off of eBay. Uh, this is not the double density tape. This is, uh, I guess if they call it single density or whatever it is, but it's the standard tape. It does have the nice 3M uh, backing on it. And uh, I really like the price on this stuff, so I thought I'd give it a try. Uh, it runs around a dollar a foot. I, I bought 17 feet of it for $17, and it was free shipping, so I thought it was pretty good. I'll put the link up to their uh, site here on the uh, video for you. And uh, let me see if I can get you a view. I'm starting out with the uh, tape here at the front of the uh, uh, saucer, and I'm going to be lighting the, def the deflector dish area with that. Now you're saying, why use warm white for that? Well, what I've done is I've tinted the... Uh, the lens for that in blue so that's going to save me a little bit of trouble if I were to use some blue tape here or blue in color light uh, I would have to build some kind of a light blocking box around that to keep that blue light from uh, bleeding over into the white windows that are nearby so we'll still get the same lighting effect in the nice blue glow out the front but uh, that's going to save me a little bit of time just by using white wherever I can now you can see here I wanted to point out the uh, soldering terminals on this are nice on this tape they're nice and big and they're just two big uh, copper buttons that you see there and they're marked plus and minus and so it's really easy to solder this it's a little easier to solder than the other tape that I've used so I really like that too and it does as I mentioned it has the 3M backing on it so it's it's uh, it should stick very well now here at the center you can see uh, these little areas uh, on each side in that little trench there on both sides you can see that I've drilled the two little holes uh, I believe those are called the engine supercharger parts uh, those holes are not pre-drilled on the model, and if you want to light that, you've got to punch a little hole in there and then mount an LED. There's some blue crystals that mount on the top on each side that are supposed to be lit. So we've got that all put in place, and I'll be using individual LEDs to do that. Now on the lighting of the saucer here, uh, what I'm doing is um, the lighting that I'm installing in the top half here is actually lighting the bottom half of the windows. They, they reflect toward each other when they're put together in the clamshell. So I've got to kind of keep in mind where the windows are on the bottom side of the saucer and make sure these top ones kind of line up with those. And then vice versa, the bottom half has to have the lights put in place to uh, light up the, uh, the top half here. So I'll be using the bottom half for reference and going around and starting to install these. And I plan on wiring these in uh, parallel. And what I mean by that is each individual strip of uh, LED tape will have its own power source uh, connected to the main power line. And that way, if we have a failure anyway, the whole circuit will still be uh, able to function. If you wire things in series, you have issues where if anything goes out, anything behind that chain in a series uh, circuit will not get any power to it anymore. If you have a connection failure or if one of these LED bulbs, if part of the strip fails. So we don't want to do that and find that out after we've uh, got the model all sealed up. So let me get my camera here uh, repositioned and up on the bench, and we'll start soldering and installing this tape, and I'll show you how some of that works. Be right back with that in just a second. So here we are all set up and ready to go. You can see I've got my little uh, LED tape here mounted in my helping hands and I'm ready to go. I'm using some of my good old trusty magnet wire now in the red and the green. And uh, this is right around 30 gauge wire if anybody is interested in knowing what that is. And what I'll be doing first is um, uh, tinning up my, uh, my wire first. And all you do to do that is just uh, put a little bit of solder on your tip there and just let this wire rest on that. And you can see that little, as soon as that little uh, kind of puff of smoke comes off of there. You can see that that's all nice and tinned up now. We'll do that on both of these wires. 
And again, these, uh, this magnet wire, if you've got a good hot solder iron, it does not need to be stripped at all. You could just melt that uh, insulation right off of there. So what we'll do next now is I'm going to put uh, a little dab of solder on each of these terminals. We've got the, uh, and they're clearly marked plus and minus, which I really like that too. Uh, and these, these have the nice um, copper disc on there, and you can see how quickly and how nice that took on there compared to some of the other tape that's out there. I really like that. And then we're just going to do a little touch on here. And there we go. We've got our positive wire attached. <clears throat> and over here we're going to connect our negative wire, which will be the green one. Just a little touch with the solder iron like that. What you want to do is you want to come back after a second or two and give these a good hard tug like I'm doing right here to make sure that they've contacted on there really well. And so what I'll do is trim a little bit of this off now and uh, just leave myself a little bit to work with. And now we're ready to go. We can get this mounted down into the uh, onto the saucer and I'll show you how I'm going to do that in a little bit. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to work through and get a bunch of these made up and we'll go through and start uh, installing those. So I'll be right back with that in just a second. All right, everybody, well, I'm back here, and what I've done is I've made up a few of these strips of LED, and I've got these uh, wires soldered on, and one of the things that I recommend that you do before you would go ahead and install them is that you do a quick little test on this. I've got my little 9-volt power source here, and I'm going to do a quick lighting test on each one of these to make sure they're all good after we did our solder work on them. And they should light up nice and bright for us. Let me get this connected real quick. And you can see we've got a nice bright light coming out of that one. And what I'll do is go through and test all three of these before I start putting them on. And then what we're going to do is uh, I've identified a couple spots, like I said, help it here at the uh, front for the deflector. I've got uh, one here on each side that needs to go on for some lighting that's on the uh, bottom side of the saucer. We'll uh, keep referencing that and work our way around. So uh, let me get uh, set up here and we'll start gluing these down and getting them all connected. Be right back with that. All right, everybody, well, let's start putting some of this tape on now. And you can see uh, it has a sticky backing on here, the 3M. And uh, I want my wiring to all kind of go towards the rear here. And I've identified this little spot right here that needs uh, lighting on each side. So I'm just going to lay these down on here. And uh, the backing itself is designed to get uh, more of a bond to it as it uh, dries or as it sits on there for a while. But what I do uh, as an extra precaution, I'll show you here real quick, I use a little bit of... Uh, uh, CA glue on this and I'll just kind of dab a little bit around some of the edges here and then I like to put a uh, nice dab there right on the terminal itself and right where the wires meet on it and out the other end of course and what that'll do is help it from someday maybe peeling or coming loose in there and that's going to give us a nice uh, believe me once you put this stuff on here it is not going anywhere and I've got this uh, little stuff called a uh, zip kicker it's a uh, specifically designed for CA glue, just a quick little uh, uh, spritz with that <clears throat> and that stuff is instantly cured. Uh, it's not going to go anywhere so that works out really well. So let's work our way around here. Alright, well we've got that one locked down on there pretty good. We're moving along. I pulled the backing off this second strip here now and what I'm doing is mounting this uh, just slightly back behind the uh, area where the deflector dish housing will go and I'm going to repeat the same process. I've got this uh, stuck down. It's sticking pretty good like I mentioned by itself but uh, over time I don't want it to degrade, to degrade or something like that and start coming loose. So again uh, same process here just uh, be dabbing a little bit of CA and I again put that right on the end there where the uh, terminals are. It doesn't bother that connection at all. This stuff isn't uh, conductive. It won't uh, cause a short or anything like that. So you don't have to worry about that. And just a couple dabs on it here and there. Make sure my wiring is down nice and tight. And then I'll give this another shot with this uh, zip kicker. And you can see that that uh, stuff instantly cures. So it's a pretty neat little thing. It works really good. The CA with that kicker works really good too if, you've got a, if you're wanting to hold a little part in place somewhere or something like that and get it locked in place really quick. And then you can always come back and... Uh, Add some more glue that'll, you know, dry a little slower or something like that. But uh, for a quick fix, it works really well. So we're working our way around here, and again, we want these wires pointing towards the rear. So I'm going to go on this side now and uh, get this one over here on the uh, port side mounted. And uh, getting this tape off of here. 
and then we'll mount this in exactly the same spot we had the other one on the other side. laid down on there really good and again I mentioned earlier I went back and tested all these uh, strips before I uh, started dropping them in here like this you don't want to have that happen either because once these are glued down they are incredibly hard to remove they're not going anywhere and this works out really well for this and like I said this helps uh, secure these wires too Get this another shot of the kicker done. Alright, you can see we're making pretty good progress already. Now what I'll do is keep laying these in in various spots uh, using my uh, saucer bottom here for reference and uh, I'll get these all nice and lined up. We've got to mount a couple individual LEDs as I mentioned right here on these little spots here and then we're going to bring all of our wiring together. Now what I recommend on this is uh, don't use your magnet wire for your main power source coming in. Uh, it is a little bit frail and uh, fragile if you flex it around too much. So bring all your wiring together with your magnet wire in one spot, kind of like a, like a power hub where you have your plus and minus. And then for your main power coming into the model, going out to your base or your stand or whatever, I recommend using a little bit more heavy uh, wire like uh, uh, you know, 14 gauge or something like that or 16 gauge wire. And that way you'll have a little bit of flexibility in if you want to build it on a stand where you can twist it and things like that. You don't have to worry about shearing this stuff off because it is fragile. But if you mount it in a nice secure area like this where it's not going to move, it'll work out just fine. So, Okay, well I'll come back here in a little bit with an update and show you all the wiring in place and we'll start doing some light testing on this to see how our windows are going to look. Okay everybody, well I'm back here now and you can see that uh, I've got my LED tape mounted around uh, the entire perimeter of this thing now. I did a bunch there in the center that's going to light up most of the uh, uh, lighting around the, uh, uh, the bottom part there in the middle and also the sensor dome on the bottom and then um, around the perimeter. I used the uh, bottom part of the uh, uh, saucer there to give me reference points where all this tape needs to go so it lined up with the windows on the bottom side. I'll have to repeat that process for the uh, uh, for the tape on the bottom side that'll light up facing this way and light all these windows on the top. But some of it's going to give me some nice uh, carryover when the reflection uh, lights back and forth. And You can see we've got uh, the wiring's all been done with uh, magnet wire and everywhere there's a wire attachment or a connection I've got those all glued down in place they're not going to move and again this whole thing is uh, wired in parallel so that every single piece of uh, lighting strip has its own power source so if anything fails or anything connections break loose we're going to have uh, we're still going to be able to get power to something so that's nicely uh, protected and uh, let me go ahead and put the lid on this now and I'll turn on the lights for you so you can see what, what kind of lighting effect we're getting on it and how much penetration we're getting uh, let me get this set out here fairly close here. Okay, and you can see that uh, we're getting a great deal of light coming out here at the front for the deflector dish. That should be plenty, and then all around the um, perimeter there, all the lights are lighting up nice and evenly. So we've got plenty of light coming out of that, and there's no... I don't have any of the plastic window inserts installed in this either, and once I put those in, that's going to bring all that light right to the surface on that. And uh, I'll be, like I said, I'll be doing that little trick where I sand those down and maybe even a light coat of uh, thin coat of white paint on the back side of those. And that'll be my diffusion that I need so I won't get any of those little light twinkling effects. We're going to get enough light right now to light the uh, planetary sensor here on the bottom and uh, everything else. So now some individual LEDs will have to go in. Let me unplug this again so I don't glare you right out. Um, some individual LEDs are going to have to go in. Um, uh, at the uh, little spots here where we've got these little uh, crystals that have to be lit and I think there's a couple little there's a little uh, spotlight or a, a uh, navigation beacon or something that goes on the back side of the bridge there and uh, a couple other little spots but uh, we'll get all those set up separately and uh, so I'm really happy with this this came out great that's gonna do it for our update on the NX01 this time we'll be back next time and we'll have just about all the saucer wiring done and we'll be putting that together and it'll be time to start attaching the big front half to the big rear half. Uh, so things are looking pretty good. I'll give you a quick look at the... Um, uh, I've got all the um, uh, seam work and everything done on these nacelles now. They've been reprimed and everything's ready to be uh, sprayed down with a final coat now and then I'll start doing some uh, 
I'm going to do a pin wash on this so I can get some of those little panel lines in there to bring out a little bit of that detail, but uh, nothing too heavy. I don't want to put a bunch of weathering on this model. I don't think they look right with a lot of weathering on them, so um, we'll see how that all comes out, and then we'll be moving on. We'll be uh, getting pretty close to having the whole, the whole thing in one piece here in the next couple of updates, so that should be a lot of fun. Hope you guys are enjoying it. So everybody take care out there. I'll catch up with you a little later. We'll be back over on the uh, Sci-Fi Model Action Channel here in a couple of days with another update on the uh, Cylon Centurion kit that we're building. So take care out there, guys. We'll catch up with you later, and happy modeling, everyone.